In this video, we will show you how to add height and give a 3D look to your hat designs using puff foam. Usually, we use that kind of design to decorate cups, bags or jackets. The 3D look is achieved by the special foam added below the embroidery. When the embroidery comes on top of the foam, the needle cuts the foam into the shape of the design. Let's see some tips and tricks on how to achieve the best results. First, you need to have in mind the constraints of the area you may use. In general, the useful area of a hat is approximately 10 cm in width and 5 cm in height. Start the lettering tool and type any slogan or word you like. In designs like that, we usually use capital letters. Select a font. I'm using Arial for this one. Set the size to 40. and make it bold. I'd like this to be a little taller, so I'll make sure proportional is disabled and I'll set the height to 45 millimeters. Set the fill type to satin. Choose a high density, say 0.2 millimeters. This is because we'd want the needle penetration points to be very close together so that the foam is totally covered and any excess foam is cut out. Set the compensation to 0 mm. Since we don't want to have stitches inside the lettering area, set the underlay to tacking and disable short long stitches. Now, let's have a closer look at the stitches. So, let's disable the 3D preview and enable the stitch points view. As you can see, these satin stitches don't seem to cut or cover the foam at the edges of each letter. So, in order to have the foam cut and covered on all sides, we need to add some satin parts underneath these edges. To do that, we will start the Outline Shapes tool and create a shape like a trapezoid at each edge. You need to hold the shift key down to add the corner points. These stitches will do the trick, thus cut the foam and cover the edges. Likewise, create the necessary parts to cover all edges. Remove the outline as we don't need it anymore. Use break apart so that we can rearrange them later. Notice that you can edit their shape, if necessary, using the node editor. As explained already, we want these little parts to cut and cover the edges, so remember to set the density to high, the compensation to 0 mm, the underlay to tucking, and disable short long stitches. Now, using the ordering options, bring the letters in front of the edge covers. Additionally, we will break the letters apart so that we can adjust the embroidery sequence later on. We will also set the remove overlaps to never so that the automatic overlap removal is disabled under the letters. You'd also want to add a running line in the shape of the letters at the beginning of the embroidery to keep the foam in place. Select the lettering part and create a duplicate. Then right click and use the Convert Fill to Center Line. A line part has been created. Set this part as running stitch and set the outline width to 0.4 mm and the length to 4 mm. For this line part, we're increasing the length so that the stitches hold the foam in place without cutting it. Finally, we want this part to be embroidered first, so we will send it to the back of the design. The design is ready, so let's check the sequence. We want the design to be embroidered from inside out to help the design stay aligned with the center of the hat. As you can see, the automatic sequence is not what we would need in this case. 
So we need to switch to manual mode and adjust the sequence. First, we will move the line parts to the top of the sequence, since we want the running lines to come first, and hold the thumb in place. After that, we will put the edge parts of letter A and then letter A itself. The same goes with the edge parts of letter C and letter C itself and again the same for letter P. At this point the sequence is as we want it to be so we're ready to embroider our design. Keep in mind that it is a good practice to set the sequence in such a way that the last edge part falls right at the point where the lettering starts from. So, since letter A starts being embroidered from the lower right area, we want the lower right edge cover that we've added to be last in sequence. So, we will update the sequence once again to achieve an optimized finishing touch. Now the sequence is as we want it to be. The other letters are fine, no need to adjust anything there. So we're ready to proceed. You can use this technique on jackets, bags, or to make patches with bath foam for a pop-up effect. Since we're embroidering in a hat, we will need a hoop suitable for hats, a jockey hat, and the path foam. It's better to match the path foam color with a thread color so that it won't show from underneath. Path foams come in different thickness. For this project, we will use a 3mm thick foam. Additionally, make sure you use a thick needle for this type of application. Let's get to make our hat. Add stabilizer to the inside of the hat and place the hat on the cap station. Secure the hat on the hoop. Remove the hoop from the cap station and attach it to the machine. Place the foam on top using masking tape to hold it roughly in place. Now you can start embroidering. First comes the running stitch that attaches the foam to the hat so that it doesn't move. Then we start with the endings of letter A at the center of the hat and then comes the letter A on top. Likewise, moving to the outside comes letter C. And finally, the letter P. The hat is done. Detach the hoop from the machine and tear off the foam. As you can see, it came off smoothly. Now we need to remove the leftovers from the inside. Have in mind that there is a chance that edges from the cut foam may be protruding from the embroidery. This is why we mentioned that you need to use a foam color as close as possible to the thread color. To smooth any such edges, you may carefully use a heat gun to melt any protruding edges. Our customized hat is ready. Enjoy the ease with which you can create your personalized 3D-like embroidered hats and make sure you come back for more.